Hey, and welcome to the Let's Run Social podcast. This is the first one, so we're probably likely to make mistakes. <laughs> Definitely going to make mistakes, that's for sure. <laughs> but Let's Run Social is a fast-growing social media company specialising in paid advertising for Instagram and Facebook. Now, the podcast is going to be basically what myself and Matt, who we spend every single day within the agency on the tools, are going to be talking about all sorts of different things within this series. So we're going to be talking about funnels, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, what you should be putting on the ads, headlines, um, click buttons, e-commerce, hooks, email land, marketing, landing, every single thing that we talk about or have to talk about every single day is what we're going to start talking about in this series. So loads and loads of nuggets, but we're also going to be having our little moans, we're also going to be having our little <laughs> gripes. Um, it's really a, a podcast that you can literally switch onto in the car or on your walk and get some really good bite-sized nuggets and in a way get what we get from our podcast that we listen to where we start going back into the office and going I learned something yesterday that's what we want to try and bring through yeah to the audience we want to get our knowledge out there to all of you guys so you can pick up some tips and go forward and hopefully utilize yeah. those within your business too so exactly okay so the one thing that we wanted to talk about for this opening podcast was really the way that Facebook um, is changing organic and why we think it's really important that businesses look at paid. And this isn't a promotion to, hey, come to us for paid advertising, but it's more of a, an understanding for businesses to, to just get a view on what they actually need to do and how they need to think about stuff, yeah. don't they? Because everyone spends so much time building up these organic audiences, and you know my sort of feelings on it all. You've got a different view on it all. Yeah, I think because I come from an organic background, that's where where I got into social marketing and everything. So I see a lot of success that comes from organic and you can build a business with organic social. You know, the clients that I've picked up in the past, like, you know, under my own name have been just from posting about my passion for social on Instagram and stuff like that. However, paid will amplify that. Yeah, well, you you can pay just to get to people quicker, can't you? Yeah, it comes down to that thing, doesn't it? Is it a time, do you have time or do you have money? And you often have one or the other. So if you've got a lot of time, then absolutely you can grow a business with organic. If you don't have a lot of time and you just want to get your brand out there, then paid is a really good route to go down. Both is the best. Both together, with a well thought out strategy, is the best. But, I mean, you know, in short, should you use paid, paid ads? I think yes, you know, there's what, 2.8 billion active users worldwide on, on Facebook. Um, but it does depend, it needs to be done in the right way. Yeah, completely. So the thing is, from my, my point of view, is that Facebook announced the other day that one percent of your followers see your posts so what we mean by that if you're a business and you spent the last three years building four years whatever it is especially at local business level actually not even a local business level we still some of the big brands that we deal with are household names and they're mm. still about building as many followers and having a kpi which says by the end of this year we want another hundred thousand followers but the problem is with facebook now because it's got so busy on the platform from advertisers um, people on the platform and everyone using it just as much. I mean, I heard a stat the other day which said that uh, you look at the lights of um, what these top leaders in social have been talking about and they're saying, you know, post 14 times a day. Yeah. They're now saying that's a bad thing to do because you're actually... So what's happening is if you follow a page today, are you going to engage with the posts that that business that you've just followed sends to you down to your timeline? If you don't, Facebook will choose that you're to, to not show you those posts. Mm -hmm. So that's 1%. So that's one person in every 100 people see a business's post. So how, from that point of view, A, now what's the point in follow, growing your followers if, apart from vanity of saying, hey, I've got 200,000 yeah. followers. Yeah, and I think that goes some, you know, like some way in terms of like social proof. If you were to land on a page in it, you can see, you know, yeah. that there, you know there is that little bit of a following. But you could it. buy them. But, but that, exactly. So a lot of a lot of people are now 
are becoming more and more aware of that. But there will still be people out there that think that those, you know, 10,000 followers are genuine. And then you go on to the post and you look at the engagement and it's got only a few likes. It's like, well, actually, yeah. your engagement rate is so off that you've clearly bought followers. But who does that? Yeah. Unless well, you're, I suppose, unless you're Gymshark and you're going, hey, we need a new fitness influencer. Yes, they're going to do checks. And I know there's platforms out there which says that these people exactly really it not. checks it all now, yeah. But, you know, if you're following a local business or something, are you going to have a look to see? If they're real or not, you'll just think, oh, they've got 10,000 yeah, followers. Yeah, it's de- definitely, yeah, local business. But from, a, from the business point of view, if they've got 10,000 followers, only 1% are going to see any of the posts that those posts go out. Now, yeah. there is an argument to say that if you're, let's say, let's say you're a gym. So my wife who works at a gym, she was, you know, they've got, it's a personal training gym, blah, blah. They haven't got, the, you know, 100 or so clients. They say that they've got really good engagement, and that's probably because they're actually interested in what's going on at that gym. Yeah. So that's fine. They might be they'll be over that one percent. But a standard your coffee shop in your local town, you know, how many times do you get? Do you see unless you're following something? Do you see an ad promoting the offers that a local business is doing? I very rarely do. No, because they're all focusing on building their followers up and then going, "Oh, we'll do a post. We'll do a post." Yeah. Hiring some social media girl on. To, on 25 grand a year to keep pushing, pushing, pushing when really what's the ROI coming off it and they probably can't even measure that ROI whereas no. paid you can paid is all about ROI absolutely and that's why I love paid because it's tangible you can say I've put this much money in and this is what how much money I've got back and it's really, really, really tricky to do that with organic yeah so so from a, from an agency point of view like us if we were, if we, which we don't specialise in organic, absolutely, hardly ever. But an organic agency are going to always have trouble keeping clients for a long term view, especially big ones, because if they say, right, here's a load of budget next year, get us this. Yeah. But at some point, the company is going to turn around and go, well, what's our ROI, ROI of that? But I think that's why you a lot of companies then go down the van vanity metrics route because what else is there so like for me from a, from an organic uh su- like measures of success it would be more around sentiment you know how how is that brand being spoken about online is it positive or negative neutral having a look at all of those conversations that are taking place or the share of voice so you know um axa v's um direct line how they are comparing in that same space on social, so that all of that stuff can be measured, and I think that's way more tangible and a measure of success than okay, last month we got an extra five followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think the follower thing I think comes in when if you've got hundreds of thousands of followers, then obviously that one percent does count a little bit because obviously it's yeah. relative then to but that that's, volume but getting to that point getting to that point and, you, and you've got to be a big, big, big business to actually throw the money at something like that organically or you've got your own social media team in house yeah to do it mm. and it fits into your marketing budget or your sales budget but as a small business you know we're all surrounded by all these local businesses who at this moment in time are trying to survive mm. And the only thing they can do is push. The other thing that comes down to it is if you're, you've always got to try and win new business. So if you're a local coffee shop or a restaurant or whatever, you're, you're wanting to get new customers into the shop, don't you? Yes, you want to remind, even if you want to remind your followers, it's hard to do that. Because they won't see it. Exactly. So we've just had a client actually literally just before here, one of the guys from the office called and said, of that ad we've just set up for that local business, can we exclude their followers? Mm. Why? Well, we know we don't want to do that. Because only 1% are going to go and, are going to see their post anyway. So you actually want those people to see the offer because they're not going to see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like what, what, Just because they're already following, we still want them to go in and see and get that footfall even if they're a follower or not, right? Yeah, completely. Yeah. Because it's about getting your, getting your offers and reminding yeah. people. It's too, that's the thing. You always need to remind people of it. Like we've, all, we've all got our favourite place, haven't we? Um, but like that, that, one, that one local business in the office the other day we were discussing, which is in Warwick, I didn't even know it existed. I didn't. Well, I didn't even know where it was. I've been driving past it for what twenty-five years. 
drive yeah. in that direction and I had no idea it was there. Yeah, they're trying it's to push themselves there. out. But yeah. they, but they but they as a business are they know what they've got to do, as in like they're a restaurant. Yeah. But they don't know social media apart from the fact of like, oh I think we need a Facebook page and I think we need to do posts. That's it, isn't it? Like they get it, they know that they need to do it, but then it's the actual like I don't know, mechanism, execution of it, they're not sure on like a lot of local businesses. I think struggle with paid sometimes because or like believing that it can get them results because they've tried it but they've not necessarily known how and done it properly well with paid well because it's too complicated well this is it isn't it it's not if you're going to do it properly it's not that straightforward really so a lot of uh, a lot of local businesses I think sometimes shy away from working with paid because they might have tried it once maybe just hit that boost button and it didn't really, nothing really came back because they didn't execute it in the right way. They didn't think about that kind of funnel, if you will. Yeah. Which is actually a great way to manoeuvre this conversation now to the boost button. <laughs> <laughs> and all the people that are listening to these podcasts when we cane certain things and put our views, which people are probably going to disagree with, will go, uh, yeah, I press that boost button like all the time. So we need to sort of explain the difference between well what what actually happens when you press the boost button and who that generates business for and my view is it, it generates a nice business for facebook um because yeah. you're not going to get what yeah. you're trying to get out of a boost button i think that's a really good way of putting it actually what you've just said is that you that boost button will do stuff it will you know it but you get very little options in terms of what you can do. And actually the person that's pressing that boost button is probably thinking, I want to get more customers. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what that's going to do. No. It's unlikely it will. Or you definitely won't be able to measure that that's what it's done. So I think it actually says something along the lines of, hey, you had really good success and engagement with this post. Get to 50,000 more people if yes. you spend 19 quid. Yeah. And it will do that. Yeah, but those 19, they'll, they'll only just see it. It's not going to have any yeah. optimization in it. So, so for those of you who are listening who don't know what we're talking about now, so when you're doing paid advertising, we have different areas of optimization. So we have brand awareness, we have um, reach, traffic, video views, video views conversions, catalog, shop, which got closed for COVID, but that's, mm. that's back. I think that's back on now which means that someone, we can actually see if someone's walked into a shop or not. Yeah. So basically, uh, without going too boring and techy, there's 400,000 pieces of data stuff that happens every millisecond. And all that data based on, does someone click a link? Do they go to a landing page? Do they buy on Facebook? Do they buy on All these hundreds of thousand different things go back into the algorithm. And us as marketers can say, we want to get people who uh, who more often link click, or we want to get people who, who book uh, we buy online or we want to get people who download all these different things so that's the thought process that we put in the background of running ads for our clients a boost button just gets likes comments and shares yeah and it's more about reach and engagement isn't it so if that's your objective then use it I'm not going to say absolutely do not use that boost button but like I think you've hit the nail on the head is that a lot of people businesses that do hit that button don't really know what it's going to do well, it's not going to get it's not going to get people going to your uh, if you're a gym and you're wanting people to book a consultation, boost button will not do that. No, they might end up going into the gym because they've seen Pot, that post. Potluck, but you, you you're never going to be able to to really know that unless they actually walk into that gym and say, "Oh, I saw your I saw yeah. your Facebook post." But then even so, then even if you wanted to just get engagement, which is Fine, we yeah. do it for our clients where you just want, you know, especially from the, the local restaurants and all that, like we just want to get engagement of, so 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 12 mile radius of everyone in that area sees it and we can make everyone see the ad. Yeah. It's not like organic where some people, people might see it, might not, or they have yeah. to share it. Everyone gets to see it, but we can also put in um, the targeting. So I think on a, on a boost, you can only do the age, gender, and your location? It's very limited, very limited. You can pop a couple of interests in. Um, certainly you can for Instagram, but it's just really limited. I just wouldn't encourage it. The Facebook make billions yeah. out of it. Yeah, and I, I think the default setting is, is 
um, boost this post to people that are like your followers. So that's all well and good if you know that your following is your audience. Yeah, yeah. It is your buyer persona. They are engaged with your business. Of course, if you have bought followers and you do that, then that's going to just be a waste of money because those followers... Vanity, vanity are, metrics, are just, basically. Yeah, those followers aren't legit. So you, you, they're not your raving fans that are engaged with your brand. So mm. that's why I would stay clear of it. Um, but I think going back to sort of paid and why it can be so powerful is like, you know, once you've proven concept, you're, you've got a, a, a brand, a business, you've got people that are engaging on organic, then it might be then that you start to think about amplifying that with paid. And then what you can do is grow your business predictably and profitably. But caveat that with, you need to know your numbers. Mm. So putting money behind that ad is all well and good, but do you know then, say it's e com how how many people then hit that landing page to then add to cart that kind no of thing no one's going to know no one very rarely people are going to know that and that's where you can end up spend wasting a lot of money and that's why we encourage our clients to look at all those numbers don't we yeah because you're going to see where bottlenecks are yeah but a local business is just never going to go to that that stage are they that's the thing. I think from a local business point of view, it is like, I just want people in our local area to see, to know we exist. Yeah. And I think that can be done very, very simply with paid advertising. Yeah. But you need someone most of the time to do it for you. Yeah. Because they're just going to mess it up and not understand it and take a lot of time to try and understand how yeah. that works. Because it's not the easiest thing, is it? And that that is the beauty of doing paid for local is that it is... A slightly different tactic and especially with you know food and drink hospitality restaurants pubs it's it is a commodity so it's you know you can just go quite broadly to your local audience your local audience is going to be quite small anyway obviously if you go into the local area so that then you can just leave the targeting pretty much open especially if it is something like a pub or restaurant that everyone likes to well you just put an interest we can put an interest of food to go and food and to, drink can't you yeah but sometimes you wouldn't even need to do that because it's like, who doesn't like eating out? <laughs> if you don't like eating out, you just ignore the ad. Yeah, exactly. But it's yeah, it's just getting there. Um, okay. Anything else you want to just? Anything else we should bring up on this topic of do not press that bloody boost button. <laughs> <laughs> press it, but know why you're pressing it. If you don't believe us, <laughs> just Google it. I think all you need to do is Google boost button. Is it good? Button. And I think you'll, you'll, you'll find so many blogs out there that say don't use it. But I've, you know, from experience, it can get results, but it's more around the engagement and the reach, not. Yeah. Not a, you know, a conversion, like you say, if we were going to run a conversion campaign and actually tangibly link that back to the ad. Mm. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, really. For a first podcast, I think that was all right. That's the first one. How long have we been on for? Eighteen minutes. Huh. Seems like five. Well, I hope you got some. <laughs> I hope you got some knowledge from that. Um, basically, don't use a boost button. If you want to know more about it, speak to us. Um, and it is a time when paid advertising. If you are a local business and you are a major business, you need to look at paid over just organic, because you can get to your audience quicker. But it also depends on how much money you've got. But for a few hundred quid. A month, you can consecutively grow your business through getting new people to come yeah. through your doors. That's actually what I wanted to mention: is that it, this doesn't need to be seen as a really expensive thing. You know, the, what the way that we we want to position this is: as a local business, you've probably put leaflets through doors, you've probably put an ad in a mag, or even hired a social media person. Yeah, like one of our clients a year yeah. ago. I think it was before you came, but they're still a client. They had two social media, jewellery company, two social media, so jewellery company, e-commerce, and they, you know, when they, they had a shop, um, but you know when a jewellery company will put their stuff into other people's jewellery yeah, shops yeah, and so, uh, yeah. I can't remember what the word is. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, I can't help you on that I one. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think what the word is. Oh, there's so much going on in this big brain. Um, it's probably, everyone, it's probably like the most simple thing. 
but they had two social media people. So what we're talking, we're talking like four grand a month. Yeah. Paye plus all their national yeah. insurance and stuff. They they spend on ads now, so they have our fee, and I think they're spending on ads at about fifteen hundred quid a month, and we're getting three to four times their return mm. on ad spend. And what we mean by that, for if people are thinking, what do you mean return or whatever? So when you're looking at paid advertising, it is about for every pound you get put in, how many pounds do you get out? And we have some clients that get twenty eight. 30 pounds out for every pound on e-com we aim for like three three or four but we do have e-com clients that are on six ten twelve fourteen but that's another podcast altogether but yeah you don't need to spend loads of money but you need to really know what you're doing to get the most out of it yeah otherwise you you could end up just wasting a load of money but you know what the, the beauty of it is is that at least with that money that you're putting into a Facebook ad compared to a magazine or whatever, it's targeted. It's more yeah, targeted, yeah. isn't it? And yeah, you can yeah. actually get some feedback on how many people have seen that and, and you can measure the success of it way more easier than um, than, a, than a magazine. And that's what we're sort of saying to a local business, you know, we you, if you're an e-com, you can do all of those numbers, but with, actually, with local business, it's more about just raising that brand awareness but in a more effective way than just popping an ad in a magazine. Yeah, yeah, completely. Okay, cool. Right, we'll wrap that one up then. Um, we're going to be putting these out. I think it's every every Friday we're going to be filming and then putting this out a few days later. Yeah. But hey, maybe it'll be even quicker. Subject, subject. How much editing you need to do? Hopefully, I'm zero. I'm hoping that yeah, for a iPhone, first one, microphone, join up. Yeah. Live. Just whether or not we've said too many things that we shouldn't have said. Which we'll know when we listen. What do you mean? When you listen to it back, and if you have to take out a load of stuff because Matt said stupid things, no. we haven't <laughs> even started probably swearing or anything yet. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to keep it tame. For well, the you're first not really one. a swearer anyway. Really? I don't. You're not a work. Wow. Uh, I think I, I am a work. See, uh, no, James I, at work. He sort of wrote swear words. Like, yeah, I think he, he invented. He, he, invented, he, invented, he invented swear words. <laughs> I, I see. I see myself as like a real swearer. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you'll, you'll have the odd like maybe not compared to you lot. <laughs> I, I think I swear far too much. I'll have to I'll have to ask my friends if I've started swearing like way more since I started with you guys. <laughs> so, so people who start listening to these podcasts, you know, the one person that might go from the first podcast and then suddenly fifty later they listen to them all. Yeah. We'll probably just see this like growth of aggre- of aggressiveness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, God, these guys have a really bad day, but they start off so well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It started off so well and lovely, and now all they do is just swear and slag everything off. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking Facebook. <laughs> you hey. fucking do it, eh? Exactly. Please, lads. Please, Ali. Right, okay, brilliant. We'll leave it there. Cheers, guys. Um, see you on the next one. See you next time. Bye.